NTV Wild Talk in partnership with the Kenya Wildlife Service and Wildlife Direct. Hello and welcome to NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi, coming to you from the Safari Walk here at the KWS headquarters. And right now I am in fact standing inside the cheetah enclosure. There are three cheetahs in the background, but I do have security around me. Now this show is all about cheetah conservation, beautiful animals. And joining me now is Mary Wickstra. She is the director of Action for Cheetahs in Kenya. Pleasure to be with you. Mary, Thanks. you are so lucky. You get to work with and for these incredible animals. Tell us, what does Action for Cheetahs do? So Action for Cheetahs in Kenya is a nonprofit organization that was formed as a research base affiliated with the Kenya Wildlife Service to conduct studies of cheetahs across Kenya. We, we do both human wildlife conflict, we do research on the cheetah ecology, um, community development programs to help people to better live with the wildlife. And why is that so important? I mean, are these incredibly stunning animals under threat? Cheetahs are declining across their entire range of Africa. And in specific in Kenya, we have less than 1,200 cheetahs left in Kenya. So Kenya is central to the Eastern African cheetah population with about 1,200 cheetahs left in Kenya. Um, this population is really critical to the health of the populations in all of the other countries around Kenya. So what are some of the biggest threats facing these um, incredibly beautiful cats? So cheetahs are threatened mostly by land use change and, and changes in how the land is used means that it cuts off the corridors for cheetah movement across the country. Um, but also retaliation for human wildlife conflict is another big issue. And how then does Action for Cheetah come into play? What sort of work do you do? So our research entails, first of all, looking at the cheetah ecology, everything that supports the cheetahs, including the interaction with people. And what we've been doing is we've been mapping out how cheetahs move across the country from one area to another. 80% of cheetahs live outside of the protected areas. So you think when you go to the Maasai Mara and you see the cheetahs running across the open plains that the majority of the cheetahs are there inside of the park, but actually 80% live outside of the parks and reserves and live in cohabitation with people. And Mary, other than the fact that these cheetahs are so beautiful with their spots and so graceful as well, why are cheetahs important and why should we care about them? So the cheetahs are really critical to a healthy ecosystem. What they do is they kill animals that are sick, animals that are weak, broken legs, and they keep the ecosystem healthy. But even more importantly, a cheetah makes a kill about every one to three days. And after it makes a kill, it eats everything it can consume in a short period of time, and then it leaves that kill for the other scavengers. So like the hyenas and the jackals, they live off of cheetah's kills. So when you have a cheetah out in that ecosystem, it actually helps to prevent the hyenas and the jackals from coming close to, to human settlements as well. Wow, and now mm. some of your work, actually a lot of your work, involves something very, very important. And believe it or not, that is poo <laughs> or yeah. scat or droppings, or whatever dung. you want to call yeah. it, dung, yes. <laughs> what is the link between dung and the conservation of cheetahs? So obviously after something eats, it has to pass that in their stool. And every time you pass a stool, you also pass some very critical genetics in the stool. Whether you're an animal or a person, you all have genetics in your scat. And so what we're doing is we're using cheetah scat as a non-invasive method of research, which allows us to look at what the cheetahs eat, look at their health, look at their reproductive status, look at the parasite load, which can also be transmitted into humans and into, wild, or into domestic animals. Um, but more importantly, the main focus of what we're doing is cheetah genetics. And a lot of that dung is in fact collected from here, isn't it? Yes. This provides us with a very unique opportunity to collect the scat when it's fresh, but also to try different means of our protocols for collecting in the wild. 
Um, and KWS is a really important partner on many aspects of our research. Other local partners like the Wells Fargo Canine Unit, like the Kingsway Tires, also gives us a lot of special um, assistance in our programs as well. All right. Well, you know what? It's time to actually learn more about the importance of that cheetah scat. So let's go and collect some of it right now. Follow you. All right. Thanks. You're so what do we have here? Here we have some cheetah poop. Wow. And Brian, one of our scientists, you'll Hi. meet him more later, mm -hmm. is collecting the poo for us. He collects it as we need it. Okay, and how often might that be? Usually about once a month for the work we do in the field and as he needs it to do the, ge the genetic studies. Obviously you can collect it on a regular basis when you're based right here. This is interesting looking. I mean, it looks pretty much like any kind of poo, human poo. Oh, all right, and of course it smells like poo. <laughs> um, it's not going to smell like roses anyway, is it? <laughs> um, but that's interesting. So we really will find out more about what happens with this uh, later in the show. This cheetah poo is found here in this cheetah enclosure. How do you search for cheetah scat out in the wild? Well, that's one of our biggest challenges. We tried to do it with just staff, but we found 300 poops, only 27 turned out to be cheetahs. Wow. And so we've now implemented some real cheetah heroes. We have fecal detection dogs that have been trained. They don't mind smelling the poop. <laughs> wow. And they've been trained to be able to locate the poop. They can locate it from as much as 1.6 kilometers away. That is amazing. So really it's the dogs that do the hard work. The dogs are the ones leading us to where the poop is. We don't even necessarily have to see a cheetah to know that a poop has been present there. And then it comes back and the rest of the studies happen after that. All right, well, guess what? Now we are heading out to Salama to meet these dogs that play such a critical role in protecting cheetahs. We're off to Salama. So now I am in Salama, specifically at the Action for Cheetah study site. It is a significant spot and we'll find out why in just a moment. But joining me is Peter Lumumba. He is in fact a field officer for Action for Cheetahs Kenya. Thanks for being with us. Great to see you, Peter. Uh, tell me now, what are some of the biggest challenges that uh, the community in this area face with regard to cheetahs. These farms were so heavily commercial ranch farming and after the subdivision of this ranch farming there was human conflict mm. because some of the resources were not used by, they were used by like both the animals and human beings like water, right. uh, the roads, the grazing land. These were the other challenges that were brought up because after the subdivision some members were allowed to settle some the first settling people. So by this, because of the consuming of water and the droughts for the three, four, five years ago, mm -hmm. we used to have some droughts. So people didn't know when they got their slot for the plot. When they came in, they were not guided to know that these areas were only kept for ranching. Right. They were not really for farming. So Peter, what then are some of the solutions that Action for Cheetah came up with that actually do work? Sometimes we went on a study to know the fertility type of soils that are found around him. This is when we opened up again with the community to trying to show them they should not do farming in certain areas. We have been seeing people trying to use uh, sneers oh. where these communities used to sneer along the fence lines that were done by the ranchers. We brought up uh, community youth programs of doing desnearing. We did some desnearing in Kima, right, okay. where we took up to some snares and even ended up to find one of the collared cheetah uh, that was collared and dead and developed and got the collar. And afterward, there was a big change. We developed a community dip, five community dips. So we took some of the community members to workshops. It brought a lot of change because when in the cattle dip, we used to go there and get information mm. about uh, where the cheetahs are. And really, we tried to open up some of the solutions, like building better bombers mm -hmm. in some of the areas. And from there, we started up coming to know which are the type of the animals that are found here. So we developed a skill of having some of the pamphlets. Okay. And the pamphlets that we developed, we developed with the community by going to the market, mm -hmm. trying to see which are these animals' names. 
And from that, we went in several community barazas and we came up with some of the pictures and uh, the power for these animals. And from there, we developed some project uh, posters that we took around the community mm -hmm. so that the community could understand which problem animal was coming through in. You were one of the people that was facing the challenges. Some of your goats were killed by cheetahs, but now you've transformed and you're working towards saving cheetahs. Why? Yeah, at first, uh, this animal is so pretty. Next, uh, after reading some book, I saw this animal is going in extinct. Because even through the studies uh, we were doing, we did uh, a rapid survey all over the country. And it took us two years for this rapid survey of every 20 square kilometers. So, afterward, when we went on this, I saw we are losing an animal that brings such an income. So Patrick, lives of community members are not only being transformed thanks to this work, but also the cheetah population is no doubt improving and increasing. Thank you so much for sharing an insight into your kind of work. Well, you know, it's not only members of the community that are working hard now to protect cheetahs, but some of the other real heroes are in fact dogs. Yes, dogs. We will find out in just a moment how they are playing a key role in protecting cheetahs. But first, I am going to meet the canine program coordinator and that is Evans. Hi Evans, good Hi. to see you. You good look very you busy, but you are the trainer of the dogs. What does that require? What do you do? Basically to ensure that the dogs are having to find that cheetah's cut out in the wild. So for us to, uh, to achieve this, we have some basic parameters which we, know we have to have. One, we have to have a first aid kit uh -huh. before we go to the field. We need to have like, uh, ensure that the dogs, in case of any emergency out there in the field, we can actually try to avert it and uh, minimize the damage on the dogs before they get the professional advice that they may seek or require. Wow, so, so all this medicine in here is for the dogs? Yeah, this is actually for the dogs. Yep. Okay, and I also see that you have some other equipment here. What is all of this? Okay, this is the training gear that we use to train the dogs. And actually, this, they have a, we have also some of the things that we put on the dogs while they are working. This is the harness or the vest where mm -hmm. the dogs, when they are now operationally, they know that now we are going to work. Okay. We have to put this, in, this on them. Uh -huh. It's also a safety parameter for the dogs also too. Oh for them to be easily identifiable when we are working. They, it also serves as a purpose for the dogs. They can carry themselves their water here. <sighs> Some other kits which they may require when we are actually walking in the open fields. That's amazing. The yep. dogs really are very well looked after then when they're out there. And of course, as you mentioned, Evans, uh, the dogs are really on this mission to search for cheetah scat. For those of you that don't know what scat is, it is really who droppings so they are looking for cheetah scat um, and what what is this this is the collection kit actually when now the dogs have located the the scat mm -hmm. I have someone who will always with me who is always going to store the cheetah scat this is the basically the collection kit where the scat is going to be stored for it to be preserved, to be taken to the lab. All right, well, yep. we'll definitely learn more about that. Now, it really is fascinating that dogs are used in cheetah conservation. Uh, can we actually now meet the dogs? Yep. Because these guys are special and uh, take us to them. Okay, let's go. Hi, Mads. Hi, Warrior. Wow. Hello, puppies. Hello. Puppies, they look like big grown dogs okay. to me. Good dog. Good dogs, sit. Mud, sit. Sit. Nope. Go down. Good boy. Shake. Nice. So, as Good you dog. can see, Evans Hello, really is ensuring that these dogs are very, very Good obedient dog. and behaving. Is it okay for me to touch them? Yeah. Okay. Hi, Mud, come. Wow. Maria, Hello. Hi. Good dog. So Evans, tell us, who are these dogs? Well, one of them has run off to, um, come <laughs> to sniff job. out the medical kit. Okay. But who are they? Okay, this is Warrior. Mm -hmm. This is Warrior, she's four years. Okay. She's a cross between a German Shepherd and a, a Belgian Malinois. Uh -huh. This is Madi. Madi is actually a Rottweiler uh -huh. mixed with a Collie. So okay. they are high energy dogs, very eager to please 
and they're very, they have a very high ball drive. Okay, and yep. tell me, as I say hi to these guys, why are dogs used to sniff out cheetah scat? Okay, basically we use the dogs for two reasons, mm -hmm. two major reasons. Warrior, sit. Warrior, stay, boy. Warrior, sit. Good boy, good girl. Mads, back. They are so well behaved. Clearly, Buddy, your training sit. has done a great Good job. Boy, so why are they used? We actually use dogs for conservation. One, for the major reason, this is a non-invasive method in the wild. Mm -hmm. That we don't have to find the actual animal to find whatever the researchers want. Secondly, we use them for efficiency and accuracy for locating the scat. And thirdly, we use them because they can cover a very wide area in the minimum shortest time. Because look at this, when you are covering the national survey, we'll have to cover like the whole country. Yes. And going by the people walking and covering all those tickets is going to be very difficult. But the dogs are very efficient. They'll sniff out each and every place in a very short time and the accuracy level is just perfect. And what makes them so accurate? Is it because dogs have a very good sense of smell? Yeah, we actually tap on the olfactory system of the dogs. They actually can smell like 1.6 kilometers away. And oh, really? when they actually get to finish their training, they are normally 85% accurate in the scat that we look at. That is amazing. I can't imagine it being Shit. very easy to oh, uh, smell for scat. But now you said that, you know, before you take them out, yeah. um, you do do a check to find out that they are in good condition. Yeah. How does that all work? Can you show us and demonstrate? Okay. So one thing I'll have to do, I'll have to just conduct a physical examination of the dogs. Mm -hmm. I'll come to the warrior sit. Go down, sit. Good girl. I'll have to check the gums of the dogs, check all for oh. any discoloration. Okay. Yeah, check on the eyes. Is, is he or he, she looking at me well? I'll have just to conduct, check if there's any bumps or anything in the dogs. And in the morning, I took the temperature too. So I also have to ensure that the temperature is normal and it's ranging okay. And then past this, I'll have to get them out, check their focus. Are they having that good focus on the ball? Oh. Are they okay? How is their urine? And why color? is it why is it so important that the dogs are in such a healthy state? Okay, the dogs should be in a healthy state because it the health of the wise of the dog will actually inform how much we cover. Because if ah. these dogs go down, then it means their efficiency also goes down. Right. So. For them to be efficient, <laughs> they'll have to, to be at their tops, both health-wise, training-wise, and every other parameter checked. Uh, okay, great. Well, yeah. let's get on with it, and let's see, really, if they are fit and ready to go and search for cheetah scat. Okay, okay, take us through it. Okay. So here I'm getting my equipments ready. Mm -hmm. As you, you saw, we, we had already gotten the equipments. Mads, come. Good job. Good boy. These dogs really, really are Stay. very friendly hey, and Tinker. very well behaved. What do you come? Good girl. Beautiful. Good job. You're such a lovely girl. Beautiful girl. So, you mind holding one? Sure, I'll go okay. for it. Okay. Just come this I'll way. come this way. Okay. So, here, here uh -huh. you go. Ensure that the leash is properly well on your hands. Okay. So you catch the leash that way. All right. Just catch it that way. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm holding on tight. I really don't know what to expect. <laughs> okay. So the dogs will actually follow you. Okay. Just I maintain the dog on your left side. Okay. On my left. Yeah. So the dog should not be pushing. Uh-huh. Good boy, Maddie. Okay, warrior. Good job. Good you girl. ready for the walk? Good girl. Ready to find Cheetah. So actually handling these dogs uh -huh. is very easy affair. The dogs normally thrive with positive reinforcement uh -huh. so we normally appreciate the dog in each and every good thing that they do okay so basically right now we are taking the dogs for a bathroom break and i'm going to just briefly check the dogs how they do all right so i'll have you have maddie first okay well i have warrior uh-huh hey mads so we're switching then yeah okay mads hold the lead all the okay good hi warrior should follow you yeah just okay come. come on maddie Come on, Maddie. So you, you'll tell Maddie to wait for us there. 
Okay, Maddie, wait. Maddie, okay. sit. What do you Maddie, sit? Maddie, Maddie. Good girl. Maddie, sit. Stay. Maddie, sit. Okay. I'll just put for okay. you the dog in okay. position. Okay, that's fine. Hey, boy. Go down. Good boy. Okay, get uh -huh. the dog. Good, beautiful boy. So you press on this. Okay. For the dog not to move. Okay. Okay. Hi, warrior. Hello, girl. So basically, you know, I'm just a beautiful girl. Are you ready for the cheetah? Are you ready? Are you ready for the cheetah, girl? Okay. Yeah. Good job. Go for the ball. Yes. Oh. Good girl. Nice. Yes. Come on, girl. Yeah, you. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. Have a look at that. Oh. What fun it looks. Yes. Good boy. Good girl. Beautiful. Good girl. Come, Tinka. What do you come? Hey, girl. Come. So can I try do a run with Maddie? Yeah, sure. Okay. So I'll basically give you some of the things that we use. Uh huh. Uh, okay. Here's the tennis. Uh huh. Uh, ensure that you you're very swift when throwing. Okay. Because they go like super crazy. Okay. Get the leash off the dog. Mm -hmm. Good job. Stay. Let's move. So. No. Maddie, stay. Sit. Stay. Let's move. Come. So among the things that drives us with the dog, the dog should be able to to understand the cues we give them. Okay. Yeah. So when you call the dog, throw the ball. Uh huh. You call, reward the ball a little bit. Okay. And then he'll have some good time, and he'll go out and have that pee break. Right. And then we'll be ready to focus the dogs now to go to the field. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to throw the throw the ball. Call, or call Maddie first. Call Maddie first. All right. And then throw the ball. Oh, yeah. Sit. Yeah. Okay. I can throw it anywhere. You can throw it anywhere. Make sure you just make sure that uh, you don't throw it in a hazardous okay, okay. area. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Maddie. Good job. Nice. Oh, well done. Beautiful. Good job, Maddie. Another yes. one? Yeah. Just call. Maddie. Okay. <laughs> Actually, you have. They become very possessive with the ball, uh -huh. and this is among what makes them to be so much to be selected in this program. Okay. They should be high energetic, high drive dogs. All right. E. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. E. Oh. You want the ball? Oh. Whoa. Oh. Good girl. Have some good time. Oh. Yeah. E. See. Oh. Yes. Oh. Stay. So with that little play, yeah. we can now judge that the dogs, depending how they did and the and how the alert level of alertness I've seen in the dogs, mm -hmm. we can now be able to advise further if we can be able to go to the field or if what we can drop one dog or any other parameter. Okay, and at this stage are they ready to both go out to the field? Are they in good condition? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's take them out. Okay. All right, time so to load the dogs. We start with Marty. All right, so now it's time to get the dogs into the vehicle. They are in great shape. They've had a quick run out there. Uh, they had a quick pee break as well. And now it's time for even more action than what you already just saw. Okay. So you basically walk up with Maddie. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mads. Up. Good boy. Beautiful. Good job. Nice. In. Good job. So Maddie is ready to leave. Hello, puppy. <laughs> shake, girl. You want to shake? Oh, oh nice. Puppy. Oh, Good how beautiful. Girl. Good job. Let's go up. Nope. In. Good girl. Yo, good puppy, good girl. You ready to go to work? Nice. Okay, success girl. 
All right, well, you are indeed watching NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. This show is all about how these incredible dogs are playing an important role in cheetah conservation. Right now, we are heading out into the field to see some more action. And after the break, you'll find us on the other side. Welcome back to NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. We are now at the Kapiti Plains and the two dogs, that is Maddie and Warrior, are getting ready to head out on their grid search. And that basically is a search for cheetah scat or poop. And Evans here, the trainer, is going to lead that exercise. So we're going to leave it to him and see how this works. And then in just a moment, explaining Sit. the process will be Sit. the senior research scientist scientist and that is Sarah. For now, let's see what's going to happen. Nice. Good boy. Sit. Nice. Stay. Hey, sit. Good boy. Secure. Good boy, Muds. Good boy. Stay. Stay, boy. Ready for the cheetah? You ready for the cheetah, puppy? Ready for the cheetah? Good job. Good job, boy. Step down. Come, Muds. Hey. Muds, come. Good boy. Good boy. Down. Nice, beautiful, good boy. Where's the cheetah? The puppy, go for the cheetah. Where's the cheetah? Where's it, pups? Go for the cheetah, boy. Where's it? Go for the cheetah. Good boy. Nice. Beautiful. Good job. So Maddie the dog really is on a roll out there running around looking so so carefully for cheetah scad. But for now I am speaking to Sarah and she is the senior research scientist. Good to be with you Sarah. Good to be with you too. Now it is amazing to see the excitement in Maddie. What is happening? Take us through how these dogs are being used to protect cheetahs. The dogs are going out to search for the cheetah scat and whenever they, they are searching then uh, when they find the cheetah scat they indicate by sitting down and that's when we go and uh, and collect the poop. You know I'm looking around and honestly there is so much dung and poop scat same thing around here how can the dogs be so keen to know the difference between cheetah poop and say lion poop they are trained to to detect different poops from cheetah from hyenas and uh, then specifically for to look for cheetah poop that's amazing. They must have a real sense of smell. Now, where we are standing at the moment, this is the Kapiti Plains. What is significant about this area? Why are the dogs brought out here? 
Mostly it is because this area, it is a research ranch for, for Ilri and uh, we are using this place because this is a refuge for the, for the remaining population of cheetahs in this place because the rest of the area in Salama area, it has been subdivided. So there is, we've lost a lot of habitat for the cheetahs in those areas. So what is the population of cheetahs over here then? Between 20 and 30 cheetahs which are within this place. So really the dogs are looking for the uh, cheetah scat and then you say you know that they might sit down if they find it. Um, but, you know, the scat that Maddie did actually find here yeah. uh, was planted. Why is that? When we arrive at a site, we usually go and search first. But to keep the dogs motivated, we need to, we need to plant a scat after 15 to 20 minutes so that they, they can be rewarded and just to make them excited about the work that they are doing. So it's part of the training? Yes, that's the part. And of is there any sort of fresh uh, scat here that you are aware of? Um, currently, there's some scat on this rock. Oh, okay. But uh, because of the rains and uh, the harsh weather that we've been having just recently, mm -hmm then uh, the, the scat is no longer fresh, but we can still collect the poop for hair and diet analysis. Right, so this is it. And this is really interesting because honestly, to me, this just looks like mud. I would never guess <laughs> that this is cheetah scat. How can one tell that it is? Um, first of all, for any predator scat, that you'll find, mostly you'll find some hairs in it and you can find some bones, then that, that's a, an indication that that's a predator poop. So for this poop, we can't say that it is a cheetah poop immediately. We have to check in the labs to check for the hairs to find out if it is a cheetah. Okay, so let's collect that then. So you'll need to have the gloves on okay. so that you don't contaminate the cheetah poop. Oh, so never mind about me getting contaminated. It's more about being careful that the poop doesn't get contaminated. Yes, so we'll have the baggie uh -huh. that we'll just tow the poop in. So I just pick it up and put it in? Oh, yes. How much? Uh, just uh, uh, a, good, a good amount, a good piece. Oh, this is really, it's really hard. hard. So it seems like it has been here for quite some so time. So you can tell that actually perhaps this isn't just speak. very fresh. Yeah, oh, oh, that like one this should be okay. enough, yes. All oh, right, and there I was going for the mm. whole, whole bit. <laughs> <laughs> and at times we usually leave, uh, we don't want to take the whole poop okay. because the cheetahs also use the, the, the skirts as a newspaper. Uh -huh. So they also communicate with each other. So if it is a female which was here, then a male will come by and it has two. Uh, to get this scent to know if there's a female around. So they, wow. they, they, they also use the cheetah poop as a way of getting news if there was another cheetah which oh, passed by. Yeah. That is so interesting. So yeah. that is the way, one way that cheetahs communicate with each other. Yes. Okay, and what's then done with this? Uh, we'll write the label, the date Hi, of I can collection. Take my gloves off now? Yes, please. Okay. Then so this is a form? That's the form that we have to record the details of where we've collected the poop and the date. The date is very important. Right, so on this form I can see that actually you have to indicate whether it's very soft and wet, mm -hmm. whether there's bones in it perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, or whether it's dry and crimpy. So a lot of uh, detail goes into um, you know, finding the cheetah poo and then yep. you label this, do you? Yes, we have to give it a date. Okay. And using the mobile phone or a GPS, we just, we will just take the GPS coordinates. Okay. There we go. Done. Thank you. All right. Super. So this then actually goes to the lab. It doesn't stop here. Um, the forensic lab at the KWS headquarters is where a lot of uh, research goes into examining whether indeed this is cheetah poop or not. We'll find out more about that later. But for now, we're heading to another location to look for more cheetah scat. So now we're at Lisa Ranch, which is still part of the Kapiti Plains and Warrior over here is ready to head out and search for cheetah scat. So Warrior, let's see how you perform. Go for the cheetah. Go for the cheetah. Go for the cheetah. So right now basically we have a center line which I'm maintaining. The dog is going to operate from my flanks. 
and uh, we are supposed to cover this whole area until the back of the of the hill where we have a possible poop rock for the cheetahs so right now the dog is getting a lot of different scents but from here can tell but it's still nothing where's the tinker where's the cheetah go for the cheetah puppy this is an open ground so the search is a little bit easy for the dog because no, there's not a lot of bushes. Move Tika, where's the chira? Where's the chira puppy? Hmm, getting something. Where's it, girl? Where's the chira? Where's it? Yes! Chira puppy, where is it? Where is it, Chira puppy? Where did he go? Where did he go? Yes. You can see the scat is fairly about one and a half meters away, and the dog has indicated. Good girl, nice. Yeah. Ah. 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 Good girl, beautiful, good job, beautiful, good job. Nice, oh, yes, good girl. Woo, good job, come on, Ria. Warrior, come, beautiful puppy. Wow, Warrior. Evans, that was amazing. <laughs> Warrior got it. Warrior, come. Hey, puppy, good job. Warrior, well done. That's a lovely dog, super girl, good girl, beautiful. Oh, brilliant. Good job, good job, girl. Good job. Guys. Evans, you know, this is so amazing to see how hard these dogs work. Mm -hmm. How important are some of the rewards? Okay, the dogs, the reward is very important because these dogs, when being selected, they are highly driven by either toy or food drive. So this basically informs how we're going to train the dogs. So that's, that's how important the toy is to the life of the dog. And what then are some of the challenges? Because I've watched the way you interact and the dogs are so obedient. One is regarding the scent that we, we are locating here. If it's too hot, sometimes it is going to fade away the scent that we are using. Sometimes when it, it, it has rained too much, it washes down again the scent. Right. So detection of the scent sometimes becomes very hard to the dogs that much. And obviously the dog's physical state is so important. Uh, when do they get to rest? Okay, we normally work on schedules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on the, depending on the schedule that we work on, the dogs get, we work for six days in a week and they normally get a day of rest. And when you're out on the field, Evans, how many sort of <laughs> blobs or whatever you call it of cheetah scat yeah. might uh, the dogs find? We conduct our searches either in the early morning or late evening. So as much as we can, depending on the level of the stamina of the dog is that day. The training that goes into this mm -hmm. seems like it takes a lot of hard work, dedication. How would you describe it? What investment do you need to put into the dogs and what investment do the dogs need to put in um, to make this successful? It requires a lot of persistence. Yeah. It requires a lot of commitment and perseverance. And the selection of the dog too is very important. So as the perspective of me being a handler, it's also very important too because I am someone who has to be passionate to, towards having the drive or having, being able to withstand the pressure it comes with having to train the dogs too. Uh, of so course, but you do an amazing job. This love that I see between you guys is just, it's beautiful. But um, of course, this is all in the name of cheetah conservation. If it wasn't true. for these dogs, yeah. then what? What would happen to our cheetahs? We really have to know the genetic flow mm -hmm. of these cheetahs, which is going to form, it's, it form, informs the, our core values as action for cheetah. So my call of duty to this part is getting them the genetic sample, where they can get the genetic sample. And the genetic sample can only be gotten in this precious tool that we call the SCAT. <laughs> so it carries a lot of loads of genetic information. And do you truly believe that um these are indeed the heroes when it comes to cheetah conservation. Yeah, they are the heroes. They do their part, they make the research possible. 
through, through them locating the scat and through the scat many other information can be gotten to know the health status of the cheetah and all this stuff. Thank you very much for showing us uh, how how it all works. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. All right. Well, now that Warrior has run off with her toy, it is time to actually head back to Nairobi to find out what really happens with this collected cheetah scat. And now I am at the Kenya Wildlife Service Forensic Lab at the KWS headquarters. And this is where all the scientific work happens with the cheetah poo. Joining me now is Brian and Noreen. Great to see you guys. Brian, what is your role when it comes to, you know, understanding this cheetah scat and um, the bigger picture about conservation of cheetahs? My role here uh, is to look at the genetics of the cheetahs and to find out uh, and process the poop once it comes from the field to come up with collection protocols and also DNA extraction protocols. And you are in fact a master's student as well, aren't you? Yes. This project will be as my thesis for the completion of my coursework. And, so, and also to add to that, it's a pilot study for the coming of the national survey that will be done. Wow, so some really serious work going on here. And Noreen, what about you? What is your role? I am the research assistant at Action for Cheetahs in Kenya, and I'm also a PhD candidate. So whatever Brian is doing, we're going to use it as the baseline for the National Cheetah Survey, which is going to be part of my PhD study. Brilliant. I mean, really, who would have thought that um, there is so much importance around cheetah poo? Now, Brian, you had said that your role is really to uh, dissect it and understand, you know, more about this scat. So tell us what happens when the cheetah dung is brought over to the lab and handed to you. Take us through the steps. So when it comes, we take the outer covering, which contains the intestinal cells. And these cells are the ones which have the DNA because that's where we get the maximum yield of DNA since this cut is, has so many contaminants. And Noreen, what then are you looking for in that piece of cheetah scat? Ideally, we are just looking for cheetah DNA, which will help us to positively identify that particular scat one to belong to the cheetah. And then once we find it to belong to the cheetah, depending on the objective of the study, we can then use it to uh, assess the diet of that particular cheetah and look at other factors, maybe like the maternal lineage and other things. And how do you find that? How do you, you know, discover the diet of the cheetah? I mean, can you see food, the food in there or is it hairs from other animals? What is it that you're seeing? Mostly when we're doing, let's say, the diet analysis studies, we look for undigested prey material, which can either be in form of hair or undigested bones. Um, sometimes we find uh, seeds depending on the, what the carnivore had fed or what the prey had fed. But mostly we, we look at the hair. Yeah. Right. And Brian, once you have identified whatever it is that you're looking for in that piece of cheetah scat, then what happens? We first have to do PCR, polymerase chain reaction, using a specific primers that are specific only to cheetah. We can confirm positively whether this is cheetah or cheetah DNA or not. And have there been cases when you've realized that actually this is not uh, dung from a cheetah? True, there have, been challenge there have been some cases that we've seen that the DNA extracted was not cheetah DNA, simply because uh, this poop may become uh, in contact with other animals or it may also be prey DNA. Uh, what the cheetah had eaten before, so it might be, be extracted, uh, extracted uh, uh, prey DNA. And how does um, this sort of finding help in the bigger picture of cheetah conservation? Generally, it will help to build or uh, to bridge a number of knowledge gaps in cheetah ecology, especially outside protected areas. For instance, it will help us to 
understand, let's say, the population genetics of cheetahs across, the, across Kenya. In that way, we can be able to know if there are any uh, corridors or dispersal barriers that are hindering the movement of genes of cheetahs. Second, uh, we'll be able to develop um, relevant protocols that can be used for maybe genetic studies or that studies for not only cheetahs but maybe other carnivores. So this can be the first, the first step. It sounds very complex, scientific, you know, yet so interesting. How and why did you get involved in this kind of work? I have interest in genetics and animal genetics also. So it's exciting for me to be part of this project and also to grow as a molecular biologist. Wow, amazing. And what about yourself, Noreen? I got involved in this particular cheetah project uh, when I was doing my master's at the University of Nairobi. And the reason why I've continued with this project is because I realized that there's a lot of knowledge gaps, especially with cheetah ecology and conservation in Kenya. And I think the only way I can, or the best way I can contribute to this is through research and yeah, contributing to the knowledge of science with regards to cheetah. All right, well, from that fascinating discussion about cheetah scat and really how identifying it helps in protecting cheetahs, it's time to shift focus on NTV Wild Talk. Here is our wild guest question. From how many kilometers away can detection dogs locate cheetah scat? From how many kilometers away can detection dogs locate cheetah scat? To participate, you must like the NTV Wild Facebook page. Only answers posted on the timeline post that's associated with this question will be considered. The first person to answer correctly wins two nights for four people at the wonderful Kapiti Guest House overlooking the scenic Kapiti Plains, courtesy of the International Livestock Research Institute, ILRI. The winner also wins free wheel alignment courtesy of Kingsway Tires Limited, plus free entry for four people and a vehicle to any national park courtesy of the Kenya Wildlife Service and a gift hamper courtesy of Wildlife Direct. Terms and conditions applying can be found on the NTV Wild Facebook page. Last week's lucky winner has been announced on the NTV Wild Facebook page. And now here's our Wild Pick segment. Jacinta Miner was at the base camp in Masai Mara. She was pointing out at an elephant in the wild. Jacinta says she was there for an installation of a solar lighting system to promote green energy. John Githai was on Point Lenana up on Mount Kenya. He was posing while trekking with some friends and he says they were there to promote domestic tourism and educate generations about the importance of conservation. Bettingima was in the Maasai Mara. She was posing by some beautiful rhinos. Betty says she loves learning about animals and she was embracing magical Kenya. Amos Sironko was at the giraffe center. He was hanging out with Stacy the giraffe and clearly Amos you were grabbing a quick kiss too. Amos says he had taken his family and a friend to see giraffes for the very first time. And this is Francis Mutetti and his son Liam. They were on Mount Longanut posing at the peak and Francis says that they were there for a hike. I just can't get enough of their beauty. Cheetahs are absolutely stunning and they really do deserve to be protected. Now the dogs are doing their part and you can too. Report any cheetah sightings, go out to the parks and see them for yourselves and learn more about them. You can also offer volunteer services and financial support to Action for Cheetahs Kenya and for more information just go to www.actionforcheetahs.org Org. Well, that's it on NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you soon. There's a saying that I love which says to look into the eyes of a cheetah shows a history unknown to man.
Yeah, 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 yeah